All right, welcome to episode, uh, I think it's 16. This is all about finishing up the D21 suspension. Well, actually, getting the D21 suspension actually installed and figuring out what it takes to use upper and lower control arms without any lengthening or shortening, getting them onto a 521 frame and using the 521 wheels. You can see some spacers here that are needed, but those are V6 calipers. Uh, don't mind the racket pinion, it'll work with the stock steering. But this is all about uh, D21 control arms. And then let's try that again. Issue one, upper control arm is limiting down travel. Obviously we want more up travel, but we also want some down too. So uh, issue two is these bump stops. Actually not that bad, ironically. Maybe. Obviously they're in the way, but you get the stock one gets in the way more than anything. This factory one, the 521 one is actually better than the almost need to cut that one off completely. I don't think it does anybody any good. I was originally thinking about cutting these off and moving them over and reusing that, but who cares about that right now? Uh I can always cut them all off and put them back on where they need to go. Okay. The other issue is there's not a lot of room here for a shock. Uh, not sure what people have done about that. But yeah, it seems really tight. Maybe you can get a stock shock, but I have to cut all this. Yeah, this control arm just seems to be in the wrong place. Even if I shorten the lower control arm, it's not going to change this space, right? This just seems too tight. I don't even know if I can get a stock shock in there. Let's grab the stock shock. Here's my first plan A. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to seriously see if I can get that threaded bar, cut that out of there, and then get one from a hard body. Oh man, I cut a bunch of those off of my all my salt axles. So I have to throw those away. Oh, wish I just had some of those now. I actually I would have a whole bunch of those. But anyways. I'll just make one, get a piece of flat stock, really thick, a longer one that's the right length, and weld it in there. Obviously, I need to clearance this, clearance this. So I've got an idea of either cut the whole thing off and, and then cut the top off, cut that in half, cut off this plate, cut that thing out, and then put the tower back on with a new longer one and then reinforce that. That's plan A. Seems kind of extreme, but that's the way I think this thing should be. Check out this custom made original 1995 test shock. Uh, <laughs> still says Nissan. It's like the original shock. Perfect for mock ups. I've never put this in the 521 frame. I'm just it may even be the same length as the. Is it the same length as the one that was in here? Oh, it's actually longer. Wow. Oh, maybe put somebody. Oh, these new shocks are good. Yeah, these look kind of new. Somebody probably. Put, these are probably not the right. These are probably not the right length. And well, those are good shocks. These are probably because it was lowered. Oh, they got some part numbers on there. K. Oh, they're KYBs. I can try to figure out what those are for later. Let's see what a hard body stuff looks like. Does it even fit in here? Oh, yeah. Cool. It is touching the uh, upper control arm a little bit. Yeah. You see that, folks? Okay. Yeah, let's get the cutting. Okay, so I made a little block to help me draw a line. So here's the plan. I'm going to try to cut out this whole section here and leave the back intact. Leave that back piece nice and straight. Uh, I could actually just cut the whole tower off and put it back on, but uh, I think I'll try to work around for now. But the goal is to get rid of this piece here. And then that reinforcement structure will be replaced by a new piece. I think I need to get rid of this whole plate, basically. It's welded right here, here, all in here. If I can get rid of that plate, 
replace it with a new one or even just down to here just down to here and I'll have a new plate up to that bar I think the goal is to get that bar out of there and replace a new longer one or even maybe just cut it in half and lengthen it out and then reinforce that I could even uh, yeah that's the goal I gotta get that bar out of there Okay, so I only need to remove like a C-section to keep that crossbar in there. Don't cut all the way to the back. But I'm thinking about just cutting the whole tower off. Now I can modify the tower on the bench instead of on the truck. And then just put it back on. Since I'll have a line here, this will have a little bit of flat there. And I've got a level here. If this can be level, I'll know exactly where it goes. Just cut straight across the back, straight across here, straight across here, straight across. Those four cuts, take this off, take that piece out, take that piece out, that piece out. Then I can get that piece out, cut it in half, put it back in. Oh, then I would have to cut out this whole side because it's got to be pushed out the side. But this side, I don't need to cut the whole thing. That's the plan. Do that. Okay, <clears throat> I got the first piece off. Just cutting all the way around here. Of uh, course, there's the trick. You got to cut the sides from inside the engine compartment. So remove it. God, I got it. This thing recording. Whoa, I got it on video actually. There it is, the bar. Wow, the nut, I should say. I need to get this. This should all be off now. Maybe I'll get up and hammer. Cool bar. Why is this? Moving. Yeah. There's now a wax. Something falls. Hey. I did it. That was easy. Not. Now. Take these stupid air plugs off. Does the heart. Is this the right one? Right side. This is the right side. Hey, it fits. Pretty annoying. Put it all back together real quick. Again. Here we go. That's it's actually lower. Oh man, look at that. It goes up and down. Amazing. The spindly thing. This is exciting. There should be enough, right? Here's a good comparison of D21 D21 mounting style. Oh, I don't remember how my 720 was. Oh, I can't remember. Maybe it was the same. I think it was actually. And then. 521. One mounts on the inside, one mounts on the outside. Uh oh. It's out. The nuts are out. I accidentally cut that one in the wrong place. Oopsie. What if this is just standard steel? So now I need to cut this in half and lengthen it out. Or just make a new one that's twice as long. I mean longer. Ooh, it's hot. Awesome. Okay, I just went through my spare parts 
my spare bolts. I only got two upper control arm bolts with this uh, from the junkyard because one side was already off when I got there, so I didn't get any of the bolts from one side. So I was gonna go back and get the other lower control arm and all the bolts from the left side. But I just went through my spare parts. Here's two, here's two, here's two, here's one. I got tons of these. These are from my old, so the four-wheel drive, these must have been from my old D21 that I converted to four, uh, solid axle swap. And uh, then I did a WD21, then I did a Friends. So I've got a whole bunch of these. Some of these are in worse condition than others. But uh, it's funny. I found three of these nuts. Not sure where these are on a D21. But these nuts are perfect to replace. They're the same height, actually a little bit bigger than this original bar. It's exactly one centimeter or whatever. So this is actually just a hair bigger. And I just drilled that out one size with a step bit and they fit perfectly. So, so I'm glad I cut this thing out because I was gonna drill it out to 14 millimeters. You see there'd be nothing left. So with all my extra... Okay, I just made a plate. It was inch and a quarter, inch and a half, whatever it was. It's uh, 3 sixteenths. It's a little thicker than factory. Factory was probably only eighth inch. And I had some old Nissan nuts. I'm not sure where I had them. I just had three of them. I really need to try to find one more next time I go to the junkyard. I'm going to buy a new little control arm. What I should probably do if I was smart. So I'll put a longer bolt here, bolt it onto the truck. And then I'll put the spindle and everything back on, check it again. Now that this is thicker than the original, it'd be... Okay, so here's the factory dimensions. I think the outside frame was probably eighth inch or thinner. And this was the original. Well, this is the original bolt here. So now, the light's dead. The, I've got about five degrees of caster. Because it says, it says about seven, right? But the truck is lifted. So the truck is actually already about two. So that's about five. That's good. And I've got lowered. Got it basically on the bump stop where I want it to be lowered. And I got zero degrees of camber. Now if I lower the truck back to, like raise the truck up to stock height, I get positive camber, which is bad if I want to be stock height. But I don't want to be stock height. Now if I wanted to be stock height, I wanted to be like there, stock height. What I'd have to do, I put a quarter inch, no, 3 16 plate in here, and I put those thicker nuts. So I'd have to use thinner steel or thinner nuts. Or I could even just drill a hole and let the nut go through the frame, because I'm not even... That'd be another easy way. Maybe I should do that. I also cut off one of the two bump stops. I'm going to cut the other one off. The problem is it's hard to get the... Cut off wheel in there. I hope that worked. Anyways, I cut the uh, bump stuff off with a, what is this, like a two inch? God, I haven't used this thing in years. It's very slow, especially on this thick frame stuff. But I cut off the front one. I plan to put it back on, just move it over a little bit, put that on later. I needed to move it for a couple of reasons. One, I think it hit the lower control arm, up the control arm. But the other reason is uh, I gotta cut the other arm off, is I need room in there for the uh, coilover. I'm gonna cut that one off in a minute. But yeah, I think I've got this working. So now I gotta weld some plate, make this permanent, which is always scary. All right, so there it is, like bottomed out with the stock control arm, wheel on. And I've got like one degree of camber. I just looked in the factory service manual. It can be from zero to one. That's technically within spec. If I lower it down to stock height, or raise the suspension to stock height, you get like two, almost three degrees of camber. So something's not right. So I looked at some old pictures of my other 95 hard bite I had. I did the airbags. And I noticed something interesting. I need to take this bag apart. This bolt needs to line up with the front control arm. I think this whole thing needs to go farther back. 
It also says, I think, eight to nine degrees of camber. Uh, well, they call it kingpin handle or something. So it's supposed to be eight to nine. So I need to bump it up. I only got like five right now. So the whole thing needs to go over. I think what I need to do is uh, drill a hole in this frame to let that nut come through. That'll actually, if I come all up against this, then I could actually have, actually this plate would be on this plate. And then I could actually shim it and get it perfect. So that's what I need to do. Okay, I just leveled up the truck again. The truck wasn't level, so I put the crossbar on the inside again, and you can see at ride height, this level, I've got almost four degrees of negative camber. And if I go up and down, it doesn't get much better. Uh, I can't get any negative, I can't get anywhere zero. So that crossbar has to go on the inside again. Let's move it again. All right, I think I finally got it. So I got zero degrees, I bottomed out, which is kind of like lowered height, which is I want. Notice the angle here. Now if I lower it down to right height, still got... The next step is to remove this from the frame, work with tool arm, the way I always do it. Let's just take a drill, drill out the rubber, pound out this center sleeve, and then take a sawzall, cut the outer sleeve. Here's a better shot of the differences. Here's the original 521 bolt. Here's the newer, longer bolt. It's like the 80 millimeter uh, bushings. So here's an old part of an old D21. It has a larger outside diameter, but the longer. This is the 720, which is long, but skinny like the 520. So here's the 521, but you can see it's the same outside diameter as the 720, but it's shorter, it's skinnier. So that's why you need the longer um, bushing from the 720s. I guess it's technically like 77 and up ball joint, 620 and up. But since all 720s, I think even the four drives are the same size. And of course, the longer bolt, <coughs> so the stars are the same, the sun gear, star gear, whatever you call it, these are the same, so I can still use the D21 bolt with the 521 torsion bar. I guess I will need to get a D21 torsion bar anchor. Don't have any of those. But, um, yeah, I just cut it out, ready to push in the new one. Okay, I just put in the new uh, bushing, just hammered it in with a one inch deep socket. Put a lot of grease in there, slide it in. I just got in the bolt, my lower control arm is in. I love how it just lines up with the factory bump stop. Still haven't decided how I'm gonna lower it yet. The easiest thing to do is, uh, well, I've got access. Once I cut off this lowering stop, if I just raise this whole mount up, like an inch or so, instead of cutting it, I was thinking about cutting this and lowering it down, but uh, we'll see. I may still see the lower control arm. Right now, I'm just trying to get it to stock height, stock dimensions, stock caster, camber, etc. So, I think the next step is now I got this upper control arm mounted in. Probably should mock it all up one more time just to make sure, but I think the next step is going to be mount this thing to the frame so I can cut this tower out because this eighth inch steel is in the way and I need to move the okay here's my latest design I decided to move that plate all the way back and give it one last chance before I cut the whole tower off I was gonna cut the whole tower off and just make a plate where it is just to get that extra eighteenth of an inch but it wasn't sitting all the way flush because of all the weld so I cut it out, pushed it back, probably another eighteenth, eighth of an inch. So let's try that. I just got that tacked on. I'm gonna take out the C clamp, put it all back together again. I already had zero degrees of uh, camber at right height and full compression, but I wanted to see if I can get a little bit of adjustability. You know what I mean? Okay, so let's put this back together again. 
Oh, the second time today. Getting pretty good at this now. This thing goes together quite nicely. You loosen up this crossbar and you can spin it by hand. And this bolt hole lines up with this line down here. That's what it shows in the mobile pictures. So I can either move the upper control arm now. Now that I've tacked it, of course. I'm just afraid. Uh, I definitely don't want zero. Because the truck is... Cab at least. Cab is almost two or three. Right? Two the frame. Two the frame is less actually. If the frame is level there, it's like two. Hmm, two to three. I don't know how accurate this is in my little gauge here. Actually there if I hold it there. Yeah, we're getting like close to eight. Minus two is five or six ish. That's okay. And it is adjustable by putting a shim under here. I'd like to get this thing within specs with no shims stock. And of course, flip a lower. I don't know if you can see there's not. Let's see if I can move my little. Stairs, what is that? Looks like it's right on zero. Oh wow, I got like one big bubble in there. What the hell? How did that happen? Come on, tools don't fail me now. How did I get one massive bubble? Oh Jesus. Oh, and I got two bubbles. How did I get an air pocket on this thing? Just my luck. Oh my gosh. Okay, my bubble broke. So old school. It's basically right on 90 or 89 degrees there. At, that's almost like full droop. That's probably like right height 90. Well, yeah. Bottomed out 90. Less than 90. Okay. I think that's good enough for now. Oh, I need to go get a new digital gauge or something. At least I got good numbers. I think this is the way to go. I kind of like the look of it. Um, it's in the right place. Good enough numbers for now. Okay, I went ahead and threw in the stock Nissan hard body shock. I think it's original from 1995. Remember I said I'm going to take out the block from underneath. There's full droop that hits there. The shock has actually got... Oh, jeez, what's that noise? Yeah, see the shock is maxed out, see? I don't know if you can see it or not. Because if the shock was tight, the shock would have limited it, so the shock would not allow it to go that far. So that is a good place. Now up travel. There's fully bottomed out. Suspension, the shock bolt, bottom out at the same time. And the zero clearance issues. Perfect. Can't get better than that. Here's my new issue. The wheel spacing on the hard body hub is around 100 millimeters close to four inches okay but the 521 wheels or 620 wheels kind of hard to measure measure the image it's like three and a half inches it's like 90 millimeters so it's only like a 316 step though right here I think I can put a small spacer on there and longer lug nuts like the rear lug nuts are longer and that way I won't have to run a bigger spacer Oh, but then I got the drum back ah, caliper issue. So I probably still need to run a wheel spacer to clear the calipers. We need to put the calipers on. Oopsie. All right, I just put on the front tension rod. You can see it doesn't come anywhere near the uh, 521 one, which is fine. I'll make a new box up there. But I'm just triple checking the caster and camber um, before I weld this all up. Thought I'd put the uh, brakes on. I'm actually really pleasantly surprised that the V6 calipers on there and there's slight rubbing uh, but then again these wheels don't fit so I just try to measure it's almost like I need a like a half inch spacer just to get these wheels to clear these hubs so I need a half inch spacer for here so this wheel is still inside so I think I'm going to do a one inch spacer 
and that'll fix um, the wheel clearance issue and hopefully the caliper issue. But you can hear it. Well, actually, the brakes are on too, but I don't even know if it is in. Maybe it's not even hit. Maybe that's just the brake pads. But you can see uh, those are V6 calipers. I read they don't fit without a spacer, but I need a spacer for the wheels. I know some people grind down this hub to put on the old rims, but uh, I'm not sure. These are dual pot V6 calipers. And these are 14 by 4 uh, wheels from 69. So that's good news. So I need to order some wheel spacers no matter what. The only thing that will work is if I run like Titan 18, 18 inch wheels, then I would not need longer studs or spacers or shims. And uh, obviously bigger rims and the aluminum. I actually have to bore out the rims though. I've done that before. So, uh, I am planning to run a set of looms in the future. I'd like to have two sets of rims. But for now, I'm going to run these. So I think we're good. I keep thinking I have too much caster. The truck is lowered in the back. I mean, stock height in the back. There's like two to three inches of lean. I've intentionally got the truck down the ground so I can measure all the stuff. I've been trying to measure the caster different ways. My bubble gauge. My trusty old tool kind of went crazy on me. The bubble is too big. You can actually use this to measure caster by putting it on and turn the wheels 20 degrees and stuff. But the tools let me down.